Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. We're going to take a break for a little while from uh, the Emerson 133. Uh, although I am on my way to fixing it, I thought we'd do something a little different today. I picked this up at a thrift shop. It's really cool looking bull of a All-American 5. Uh, probably early to mid 50s. It's a bull of a Fidelity 300 table radio. And it's got the standard complement of five. Cool thing is, is it's got a uh, funnel input. It says radio stations cannot be received with record player connected. So that very likely means that there's a switch in there that uh, interrupts the uh, detector output to the volume control. So I have no idea if this works or not. But, just out of curiosity, let's open it up and see what's inside. So, as you can see, this is your typical All-American 5, 12BE6, 12BA6, 12AB6, 50C5, and 35W4. Also got a pretty big speaker in it, too. That's a 6.5 inch speaker. It should sound pretty decent. They've got uh, rubber grommets disintegrating that's holding everything together. I may or may not replace those. Uh, also, these use the automatic uh, branded IF transformers, which are notorious for silver mica disease. So I may or may not put a bunch of time into this, although I do like the look. It sure is pretty. It also doesn't have an interlock, which is kind of weird. Uh, normally, machines of this era will have an interlock on them, so maybe this was just before the... Uh, Underwriter Laboratories thing went into effect that made sure that all the American products had interlock on the power cords or something. I forget exactly what piece of history it was that instated that. But anyway, uh, standard uh, railway type loop antenna. It's got a dial string back here. And I guess the next thing to do. Put it back together and it's pretty simple they just use these little push pin things to hold it back on and then uh, two hex nuts one of which is missing and again I don't really expect this to work picked it up at a thrift shop it was nice looking so I figured eh what the heck give it a shot Wow. The volume control is just frozen solid. Grip it with some pliers and that's pretty scary there. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Let me find some penetrating lube. Alright, I'm unable to find the lube, so I've just kind of turned it in the midpoint position. I assume the power switch is on, and if it's worth pursuing, then we'll deal with that a little bit later. So right now, let's just plug it in and see what happens. Here's our super awesome... Oh, yeah. Let's fix that. Hang on, I want to show you guys something awesome. Let's see if we can get it to zoom in. Look at those pieces of frayed wire there. Just about ready to arky sparky together. With these uh, homemade plugs, always make sure to check that. That could have been ugly. In fact, they are just about touching. Doesn't take much to set a little strand. <laughs> Alright, so let me get this apart and we'll redress those wires. Now you see, this is a misconception that people had about these things. Is that you had to like strip the wires off a whole bunch and then wrap them like 26 times around the screw. And then you get stuff like this where it frays apart and, and almost touches together. 
also the uh, insulation there is like really badly trimmed so let's clean it up a little bit and see what better we can make it look so just to give you an idea this is really how it should look about a half an inch to about five eighths of an inch tops just enough to make a J hook and then uh, obviously I might pull this back and trim this away a little bit more so uh, it's properly exposed and not frayed out and so I'm gonna do that we'll J hook them around those screws and then plug it in and see what happens alright so this is kinda how it's supposed to look as you can see they got barricades and they want you to separate the wires so that they don't come close to touching each other and you just get a short amount excuse me short amount of wire and wrap it around there and just J hook it and this isn't great but it's better than nothing so let's plug this thing in and see if it does anything maybe it burns the house down What else is on your gentleman's mind? Nothing, Gino. Nothing at all. Actually, it works. Hello. Hey, hello. I'm Danny Clover, Mrs. Logan. I'm... I met you in a haze once, didn't I? Right here, Mrs. Logan, this morning. Come in. There's nobody here but Albert. Hey, Albert. We know him, don't we? You back again, Buster? I'm interrupting. I'm not sure who's broadcasting the old radio program. What? It's pretty cool, though. Come on, Albert. Now, look, baby. Say yes. Mm -hmm. Oscillator's off. Uh, what about the. That's supposed to be 600, and it's reading at 660. Began. There must be 760. Sorry we talked about Joe Blair. Do you remember that? Every word of this. I'm glad you do, Mrs. Lo. By KD Kid. Burger and fries, sir. Say. I'm alone. Stop making a joke out of yourself. Say, please. A man walks in here and talks about two murders, and I'm going to say, please, you're a jerk, Ruth. J-E-R-K, jerk. The eighth spell. Very cool. Give me a penny, mister. Good people want to perform. All right. So we'll just get rid of that for now. Uh, definitely need to unstick this guy. And I'm kind of curious as to what's inside. Somebody must have serviced it for it to be zero hum and work perfectly. So, um... Let's open it up and see what we're really going to find. All right, well, here it is out of the box. It's definitely got some uh, tarry goo stuff attached to the speaker, which probably acts as some sort of air seal. Fortunately, the speaker's rubbing a little bit. You can hear it go crunchy, crunchy. There's some junk in the voice coil. We might be able to salvage that. Don't know yet. I'm just going to pick off the rubber. If I want to later, I can add it back on. Pretty clean otherwise. Ah, see, there you go. So this has got the Aerovox dry electrolytic. <clears throat> this looks like it was uh, repaired sometime in the 60s based on that part. These dry electrolytics rarely ever fail. So I think I'm just going to leave that one alone. Obviously there was zero hum. But we did, look at that, the death cap. Look at that death cap. Split in two. And it's cold, so it wasn't shorted or anything. This uh, dropping resistor definitely got a little toasty. It's 22 ohmer. They probably never changed it when the original electrolytic shorted. 
This is just such a simple machine. Look at that. You've got a total of four coupling capacitors and two electrolytics. And everything else is done in this little molded ceramic pack here. Which probably determines your tone and everything else. Oh, nope, you got one ceramic there, that .005, so a total of five capacitors in the whole thing. And then the electrolytic. Really freaking simple. So we do need to replace the death cap there. I've got some genuine spray orange drop awesome omatic capacitors sitting in a box that I can use for that. And then we'll maybe just clip out and solder some new capacitors in just for longevity's sake. And then we definitely need to get something in here to loosen this up. But it sounded pretty good. I mean, we need to do something about that speaker. I don't know what yet. There's trash in the voice coil. Probably little bits of metal flaking off over time. So yeah, let me dig up some parts and let's see if we can repair what's going on in here. Alright, so here's some scrap that I pulled out of a, another machine that I had. And these are some weird values actually. We've got over here 0 .082, 0 .01 which is pretty standard, 0 .15, 0 .039, 0 .04, 0 .039 again, and 0 .22, which is pretty standard. So, uh, obviously, I won't need the 0.22s. Uh, the 0 .082 is pretty close to 0 .1. Uh, I can bundle that up with a 0 .01 for 0 .092, or we could do a 0 .15 for the 0 .1 over here. Get pretty damn close. Uh, or we can do, you know, like, uh, oh hell, I don't know. I'll figure something out. This is just going to be a budget restore. Probably just something I'll sit in the shop and use because it's kind of cool to look at. And as far as this guy is concerned, it's a .047. So I'll probably do a, a .04 and .01 to make it .05. So, let's get them made up and let's get them in. Alright, so out of the parts bin, here's what I have. And I had to grab a couple of .01s to make these work. But I have the .01s here and I'm away from the other shop where all the main parts supply is, so this is what I have to work with. Anyway, for the .047, we've got a .039 and a .01 paralleled. .01 by itself for this guy. Uh, for the .05, we've got a .04 and a .01. And then for the .1, we've got a .082 and .02.01s here. So if you're curious, we've got our little uh, capacitor checker on my fluke meter here. Excuse me just a second. Let's get this in a position where I can show you guys. And I'll try to pan out so we can see here. But anyway, uh, for the .047, we've got our .039 and the .01, which comes out to 40, .048 really, 48 nanofarads. That's pretty damn close. So much closer than the original part could have ever been tolerance-wise. And of course, the standalone .01 is .01, 10 nanofarads there. And our 0.01 and 0.04 should come to about 0.05. And 0.051 if you want to be precise. And then lastly, our 0.082 and our 2.01s paralleled up give us 0.015. Or excuse me, 0.105. So pretty damn close. Again, these are well within the spec tolerance. Of the original parts which are probably 20% out and we're going to kind of spec them when we pull them out and see what the differences really are so the next thing to do is to get the old caps out and I'll just clip them out and we'll test them so that you can see what the differences are all right so with the old capacitors out let's see if we can do just a kind of a quick laugh test and see what the differences are 
Now I'm not faring much with this uh, .047 here. I think this one's probably a done deal. And if I can get my probe around it, we can test it. Yeah, that one's open. Kind of figured it would be. It's blown apart. Now the next one we're going to check is the .01. And the other one measured 10 nanofarads. Let's see what this one measures. Again, assuming I can get my probe around it. Hang on, let me put the camera down. Alright, so this one, this is the .01. This measures .015 right now. So that's uh, gone up quite a bit. 50%. Far beyond the, uh, what is it, 20% tolerance most of these are at. Does this even have a printed tolerance? No, it doesn't. All right, so let's go on to the 0.05. All right, the 0.05 measures 0.075. So that one's definitely, <laughs> that's definitely another 50% greater one. And I'm not holding my fingers on the leads, although it looks like there is. They're on the insulator, so you're not reading my steric capacitance. That's 0.075. That's a big big increase and then of course we have the 0.1 microfarad as our final test let me get positioned on that one and that one measures 0.132 which is a little bit more but uh, not almost it's about 30 percent more not quite much more than that the other ones were 50 percent off or more but yet the machine still worked and it sounded okay so that's uh, definitely the simple build tolerates a lot of uh, uh, slop in the component. So the next thing to do is let's get the new ones in and then see if we can't bust that control loose. Now I'm going to bring something to the attention of people that are just maybe starting out on this. And I realize that this is kind of a budget cheap restoration repair type thing. In fact, it's just a repair. It's not a restoration. I'm not cleaning it up. I'm not making it like new. I'm not restuffing the old parts, I'm just repairing it. Now when you do this, the leads may not be long enough and that's why you're just clipping it or you don't want to risk damaging the phenolic sockets or terminals. But when you connect new capacitors to the old terminals, it's a good idea to make a good solid connection. And I don't know if you can see it there, but I've made two J hooks to hold the leads together before I solder them. That way there's a good strong mechanical connection there in the event that your solder wasn't that great or it oxidizes or gets cold or whatever. Likewise on the other side here this one I actually wrapped around the post a couple times and then cut off the excess which you can see lying over here in the corner which I need to get rid of. <laughs> uh, but You get the idea. Uh, you want a good strong connection and when everything's soldered up make sure these are all taut so that this isn't flopping around in space if it's near chassis potential you might want to insulate those leads too uh, but this one will be fairly well suspended away from the chassis by about maybe uh, half an inch or so so we're not going to worry about it likewise with the others but that's just a good little note there uh, that way you'll avoid hassles in the future uh, if the solder does crystallize or go bad, use a hot iron to 50 watts or better, a nice soldering station like a Weller or a, an upper grade Tenma even is a better than zero. Uh, don't use the 30 watt pencil iron, that's a mistake. You'll heat up the part and kill it trying to get the solder to melt on your work. Then use some nice 60-40 rosin coarse solder. And anyways, back to this. I'm going to finish... Uh, installing the rest of these and then we'll see if we can bust that volume control loose okay so here it is with all the capacitors in we've got everything installed there so now I'm going to take a shot at this uh, the famous deoxid D5 contact cleaner and this does have detergents in it and things that will break down sticky grease so I'm going to try to do right now turn the nozzle on the lowest setting and just trickle some yeah, that wasn't a trickle. 
uh, try to get some uh, contact cleaner down that shaft there through the lock ring and then also hose the inside where the bearing comes through turn the pressure up and give it a blast and then we'll wait a little bit ah it's working it's magic it's starting to loosen up a little bit definitely needs more tension though oh look at that like frickin magic There we go. Awesome. Okay, that was easy. God, it's almost never that easy. Alright, so since this doesn't need a cheater cord, oh, and by the way, I cleaned up the speaker and I just kept pushing on this until I worked all the, on its back, until I worked all the garbage loose which is probably floating around in that magnet gap back there. Hopefully it stays there. If not, I'll probably have to take cut the dust cap out and run like a 70 or 80 cycle tone through it to work everything loose. But, let's plug it in. And let's see if it works differently, better or worse. centered on the nation's fighting men in France and the battlefields of the world, the DuPont cavalcade tells the story of one of the group of men, the Army Chaplain's Corps, who go into battle armed only by the strength of their faith. The A little dirty sockets, but the words and acts that sustain works. and console and give heart to those who bear the brunt of battle. Our cavalcade play is the story of one of these soldiers of faith, the story of a chaplain attached to an Army Air Force. Very cool. So let's see if we can uh, better work on that oscillator. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to get the pointer lined up based on that. Uh, well, I'll have to see where the oscillator adjustments are on this. Get the pointer lined up and do a just a, kind of a blind eye uh a blind eye alignment I know that it needs to go a little more downward from where it reads so let's see where the tuner adjustments are it's probably them right there and then that down there is probably your oscillator that's got no core in it so that's just is what it is and you probably tweak it with the tuner a little bit. So what I'm going to do, assuming I can find the right part, my little alignment tool kit here, primitive as it is. Yeah, let's get one of these guys, and we'll see if we can align it so that it's facing a little more, reading a little more down than it is. Pretty good sensitivity, huh? 
I'm in San Diego. I'm pretty sure this is an LA station. Alright, so that's your RF trimmer. That's our oscillator. I figured as much. Who got my name for Secret Santa? Yeah, I lost KCBS, I guess. Tweaky, tweaky. Really doesn't get much better than that. This is from Lexus Carlsbad and Lexus has come. A lot of noise from the fluorescence in here. Not the greatest choice for RF. That's 540. Democrat Andrew Gillum concedes a Republican. All right, we got it pretty close. I'm just basing that on a guess. So what let's do before we button it up. I'm just gonna brush the dust off here and that output tube socket wouldn't hurt to clean <coughs> nice and dusty all right output tubes hot but not blazingly hot that's good Trickle a little bit of uh, contact cleaner down in here, tiniest little bit, and then work the uh, tube in its socket a little, just to kind of clean up the noise. The other one seemed fine. Let me get turn it on one last time. numbers to the board. <laughs> to add insult to injury, you could have used those 15 egg salad minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to Geico. Yeah, oh, this is getting hard to turn. Spritz a little bit in there to loosen it up some. So that helps immediately. Big difference. Details or to get pre-qualified, call 877-SDCCU for you. Or visit SDCC. Numbers is a challenge business is evolved. We've had private not just doing pretty good. Tom Fody. San Diego's most innovative newscast has raised the bar. The pride and passion our city deserves is News 8 on the CW. Kick off your morning with Eric Connor. Wow, that's loud. Okay. 
let's put it back together. Okie dokie, she's all back together again. Got a nice working volume control now. Let's see how it works. Because congressmen don't pay any attention to the Constitution anymore, or not, they do not feel that. Now it's more on tune with what the needle says. Hey, uh, Chaplain Bill. Yes, Mr. Zavino. Uh, in case the cable gets here from Rosie while we're still out, sort of look out for it, will you? I sure will, Mr. Zavino. Don't you worry about it. That's the job I really like, standing in for a new father. Well, thanks. Depending on your budget, there's an option for everybody out there. Want to get to win it? Going to Ellard. Pretty sensitive considering I'm in a building with a bunch of fluorescent lamps. Engines might run out. A full head of steam. Track gun head. So there we go. Nice little radio I picked up. I like the way it looks. I'll try to clean up the cabinet a little bit, make it look even nicer. But uh, that's just an example of a straightforward service you can do, just replacing the bad caps and cleaning stuff up to get it to work okay. Not a restoration by any means, but cosmetically this really doesn't need much. So uh, anyway, this one goes in the living room. Hope you guys watching the video and uh, more stuff to come soon.